Paper 7 Model Solutions. Okay, question one deals with pressure. There is a formula for pressure. Pressure equals force over area, which we can write in a triangle, if you prefer. In this question, we're trying to work out force. So force is equal to pressure multiplied by area. Now, the issue with this question is pressure is given, given in newtons per meter squared, and the area is in centimeters squared. So we need to have the same units, uh, of not centimeters squared. What I'll do is I'll convert the centimeters squared to meters squared. Now there's a fact which is there are 100 centimetres in a metre. And that's the relationship between centimetres and metres. If you want to know the fact that links centimetres squared to metres squared, you have to square each part. So square 100, 100 times 100 is 10,000. And square 1, 1, square metres, metres squared. So to convert between centimetre squared and metre squared, you have to divide by 10,000. So if I divide 1,500 by 10,000, I end up with 0 0.15. So now I can use the formula for pressure times area to work out force. So pressure is 28, the area is 0 0.15, and I end up with 4.2. Give your answer correct to the nearest whole number, or find the highest common factor of A and B. So what you need to do is go through each of the pairs of uh, each of the different numbers. You have twos, threes, and fives there. And look for the highest power of each number provided it's common. So out of the twos, the highest power of two that's common is two squared. It's in both. Three is not in both, so we can't look for three. And there is at least one five in both. Work this out. Four times five, twenty. For the lowest common multiple, you look for the highest power of each different number, and it does not need to be common. So out of the twos, we have two cubed. Out of the threes, does it need to be common? So we just choose the three that's there. And out of the fives, we choose 5 squared. Work this out, type it into the calculator, it's 600. You should only leave your answer as a product of prime factors if it tells you to in the question. Okay, next question. Okay. So, there are 120 counters in the box, and they are either red or blue. So, there are three times as many red counters as blue counters in the box. Now, that can be written as a ratio. If blue is one, then red is three, because red is three times as many as blue. Now, we know there are 120 counters in the box. But we also know there's four parts altogether here. And we know that this four parts represents 120 counters. So four parts for 120 counters. If I divide 120 by four, I can work out what one part is worth. One part is worth 30 counters. So that means there must be 30 blue counters and 
and as a result, there must be 90 red counters. Okay. Carl takes one third of the red counters from the box. So Carl takes one third of 19 of his times in maths. So if you type that into the calculator, Carl will remove 30 from the box. So now there are 60 left in the box. Kerry takes 80% of the blue ones. 80% is the same as 0 0.8. 0 0.8 of 30. Or if you like, 80%, 80 over 100 times 30, whichever method you prefer. I'll work this out. And Kerry will remove 24 counters from the box. 80% of 30 is 24. So she's going to remove 24 counters from the box, which will leave six counters in the box. Work out the ratio of red to blue, give your answer in its simplest form. Both of these divide by six, so divide them by six, and you get the final answer 10 to 1. Next question. Okay, next question. Varies. Now, it tells you at the top the accurate scale drawing shows the positions of ships L and M. So, the word accurate means we'll be able to measure some, maybe some angles on this. Um, so, find the bearing of ship M from ship L. Where it says from ship L, that means you do need to start at L, it's from L. Now, uh, there's no line that connects L to M. Let's draw that on first of all. And bearings are always measured from the north line and in a clockwise direction. So we place the protractor over the north line and the line with the cross. I think you'll find that it is exactly 110 degrees. Also, if bearings are um, less than 100 degrees, you have to make sure that you write uh, the answer in three, using three figures. Okay, so if it's 75, you would write down 075, for example. Okay, next one. This, the scale of the drawing is one centimeter to five kilometers. Ship P is 40 kilometers from L and on a bearing of two. 40 from M. So the protractor, the half protractor, um, and only works out the angle up to 180 degrees. So there's 180 degrees on this side of the line. Okay? We just need to work out uh, what we need to add on to 180 to get to 240. you add on another 60 degrees. So I've already measured 180 there. What I now need to do is find 60 degrees. Okay, so that's 60 degrees. So with the 180 added on to it, that's now 240 degrees. So let's have a look at this. Bear, the um, ship travels on this bearing, okay. so it's somewhere on that green line, but it's also 40 kilometers from L. Now, you have to be quite careful here because it's, it's um, 40 kilometers from L. And if you look at the scale, each centimeter is worth five kilometers. So what it means is uh, 40 divided by 5 is 8, and 8 times 1 is 8. So we need to measure 8 centimetres from L, but also so that it crosses this green line. And there's a, quite an accurate way to do this. And what you do is you take a ruler and a pair of compasses, and you pull it out to 8 centimetres. Exactly eight centimeters. What you do 
initiative is you you take your um, pair of compasses, place the point on L, it's from L. You now draw an arc so that it crosses the green line. Okay, now it crosses the green line twice. Once it's inside the diagram, once it's outside the diagram, so it must be at this point of intersection here. This is where the ship is. Just mark it with a cross position P. Okay, next question. Solve the inequality, but you need X in the middle, so you add one to every section. Add one, add one, add one. So we end up with eight less than 4x, which is less than 18, then divide every section by 4, and this is the answer to the question. This is what you write down on the answer line. 2 is less than x, which is less than 4.5. The next question, we have um, English tests and maths tests. Now, for the English test, the information is summarised. We have a median and an interquartile range. What we need to do is um, work out the median and the interquartile range for the set of data that's given here, and then we make some comparisons. There are 15 students altogether. The formula for median is n plus 1 over 2. 15 add 1 over 2. 16 over 2 is 8. So the eighth one is the median. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the median. Okay. If the median is the eighth one, the lower quartile will be the fourth one, and the upper quartile will be the twelfth one. Four eight twelve. So we can write here: median is twenty six, and the IQR will be twenty nine minus twenty. Which is nine. Now, when we're explaining this, we really need to write median explain and then IQR explain. So, let's write a couple of sentences then. So, first of all, for the median, um, we can clearly see that the mass median is higher. So, we can write it like that. Oops. Mass median greater than. Comparison. Then. What does that mean? That's on the explain line. I'll explain what that means. This is the test. On average, students performed better in maths. And the next one, the IQR. I always uh, prefer to say which one is smaller. So IQR for English is 14, but for maths it's 9. So IQR, so it's right here, maths IQR is less than English IQR. What does that mean? Okay, maths, when the IQR is smaller, it means the data is more consistent. So maths test results are more consistent. Okay, next question. So the negative in the power means you have to work out the reciprocal of the fraction, and that's the easiest way to deal with this question. So flip the fraction. But now write it to the power two thirds. Okay, and the power two thirds means to cube root and then square. You can type in the calculator 27 to the power two thirds, that's 9. But when you have a bracket to a power, you times the powers. So if you type in the calculator 3 times two thirds, it will come up with 2. 125 to the power two thirds is 25. And again, if you type in 12 times two thirds, that's 8. Answer. 
Okay, next question, estimating the gradient when x equals 3. What you need to do is draw a tangent at 3 to begin with. So, let's take some skill. Okay, it's got to be exactly at 3. Now, you line your ruler up and so that it touches exactly at three. Now find two points on the line, on your line. I have, um, this is something from earlier, I have 1.80 and 4.11. Okay, I want to work out the gradient, I can use the formula. Well, first of all, I can label the coordinate x1, y1, x2, y2. And I can use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If you type that into the calculator, you get a gradient of 5. Now, there is some leeway available on this question. But of course, if you end up with an answer of 10, you made a mistake, but there is some leeway. Next. Okay, circle theorems. This does not say to give reasons for your answer. It says show you're working clearly. So there's a. if you read the information, we have tangents on the diagram, and we have two radii as well. So a tangent and a radius meet at 90 degrees. So if we write down angle B, A, O, and B, C, O, are equal to 90. So we don't need to write the reason, you can if you want to. There is a kite shape there. The angles in a kite shape add up to, or any four sided shape, add up to 360. So if we do 360 minus 90, add 90, add 74, we can work out the missing angle in the kite shape. And that's 106. So we can write down COA. Equal to 106 degrees, and then this is the angle at the center. We're trying to work out angle ADC, which is the angle at the circumference. So, angle ADC is 53 because angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference, so 53. And that's the answer to the question. Next question. Okay, so if we start by completing uh, the middle section, 15 students study history, geography, and religious studies. 21 study geography and history. So that's this bit of the diagram, geography and history. So you need to write six in the section so that it adds up to my 21. 16 study geography and religious studies. Geography and religious studies are 16, so there's to be one in here, yeah, so that would be 16. 30 study geography, so in the geography circle, all four numbers should add up to make 30. And currently they add up to make 22, so this has to be 8. Next, 18 study only religious studies, they're in this section there, in the RE section only religious studies. And also it says 37 study religious studies. So all of this uh, R circle is 37. So what it means is um, you have to write. So uh, let's try one time. It's 18 add 15 add 1. It's 34. So you have the remaining three in here. And if you add all of these numbers up, it tells you there should be 65 students. Now, there are, if you add them up and subtract from 65, there's 14 left. And so it might be quite tempting to write 14 outside of the circles, but it does tell you at the beginning of the question, all the students in year 11 must study at least one subject. So there is nobody outside of the circles, so the 14 will be here, inside the circles. 
I see any of the section of the dog. Okay. A student in Year 11 studies both history and religious studies. So the overlap between history and religious studies is here in this section. Okay. So there's 18 people in that particular section, so it's got to be out of 18. Now, out of those 18, work out the probability that this student does not study geography. So how many students out of those 18 do not study geography? There can't be in the G circle, so there's only three that are not in the G circle in that space that we've shown you. Okay, and you can cancel this down if you like to a six, or you can just leave it like that. Okay, next question. Work out the area of the triangle. To work out the area of the triangle, I need to use a half AB sine C. The only problem is I don't have you choose any angle you like to work out. Uh, I'm going to choose this one. It doesn't really matter which one you work out. Okay. So I'm going to choose to work out this angle at the top. How am I going to work out the angle? Well, cosine rule. Three sides, one angle, cosine rule. There is a cosine rule for working out angles. It is a rearranged version of the one on the formula sheet. So the one on the formula sheet is A squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos capital A. What I want to do is make cos A the subject. So I'm going to do a bit of shifting around with the equations, uh, with this formula, sorry. And I want to try and make cos A the subject. So it's going to be 2bc cos of capital A is equal to b squared plus c squared minus a squared and this is all over I divide now by 2bc it's all over 2bc now in the cosine rule b and c are the two sides that sandwich the angle so we have cos of the angle let's call it x is equal to b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc. Okay, and don't forget, b and c are the two sides which sandwich the angle. Now, I have chosen x to be my angle. That means 8.3 and 5.6 sandwich my angle. So I have something like 8.3 squared plus 5.6 squared minus 10.4 squared and it's over 2 times 8.3 times 5.6 okay and then x is equal to inverse cos this okay let's try timing this in the calculator so inverse cos fraction 8.3 squared plus 5.6 squared minus 10.4 squared over 2 times 8.3 times 5.6 squared to the right hand side, close the bracket, you end up with 94.88. Okay, so this is the value of the angle. Okay, don't uh, hold back, copy down the display. Okay. Do not run that number, and then it's a half AB sine C. Now, a half AB in the formula for the area of a triangle, A and B are the two sides that sandwich the angle. So it's a half times 8.3 times 5.6 times sine of the angle of sandwich between those two sides. Like this. Okay. You must use the entire calculator display. So something like this, 0.5 half times 8.3 times 5.6 times sine of the angle that's sandwiched between, which is like this. Okay, I'm going to end up with an answer of 23.155. And the question says to 
run to three significant figures. So it'd be 23.2, 23. Okay, next question, number 12. So prove algebraically that the difference between the squares of any two consecutive integers is always an odd number. So just going to highlight the keywords here. Difference, squares, two consecutive integers. Obviously, algebraically means use of algebra. So let's just have a look at this with the numbers to begin with. The difference between the squares of any two consecutive integers Right, two consecutive integers. It doesn't say two consecutive odd or two consecutive even. It just says two consecutive integers. So let's choose three and four. The difference between their squares, so three squared, four squared, nine, sixteen. Okay, sixteen. The difference between their squares, sixteen, take away nine, is seven. Apparently, this number. Is always odd. Oh wow, it's odd. Right, so just need to do this with algebra now. So let's start off with a number n. The number after it will be one more than the previous one, so n plus one. Then I square the numbers, so n squared n plus one squared. When you have a bracket squared, you write the bracket out twice and expand it like this. squared and here we'll have n squared. So we have from the outside 1 times n is 1n and in the middle 1 times n is 1n. So plus 1n plus 1n makes plus 2n and 1 times 1 is 1. So I'm at this stage now. I've worked out the squares. I just need to work out the difference between the squares and that's the big one. Those are the big ones. Take away the smaller one. So n squared plus 2n plus 1, minus n squared, n squared to cancel, you're left with 2n plus 1, and 2n plus 1 is always odd, because um, n, is a, n can be any integer, but when you multiply any integer by 2, it ends up within the 2 times table, so 2n makes the number even within the 2 times table, and then adding 1 to it, Adding one to an even number gives an odd number. So the, 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 the question is now. Okay, I'm probably just put a little line through this just to say to the examiner, mark this one or not. Next one. So probability and algebra. There are n sweets in a bag. Six of the sweets are orange, the rest of the sweets are yellow. Orange, yellow. Bag, N in the bag. Six are orange. The rest are yellow. So it's N, how many is in the bag, minus the number of orange, which is six. Hannah okay. takes that random sweet from the bag. She eats the sweet. That means next time there's one less in the bag. Hannah then takes that random another sweet from the bag. The probability that Hannah eats two orange sweets is third. can work out all of these branches if I wish to. So orange, orange. This is the one that I'm interested in. So all of these branches will be out of n minus 1, because you've taken 1 out of the bag. Okay. So if you take it, so you're at the beginning of the tree diagram. You take an orange one. That means there's one less orange in the bag, so 5. But there's still the same number of yellow. So if you look back at the beginning, there's n minus 6 yellow. Okay, reset, back to the beginning. This time you take a yellow one out of the bag. So there's still the same number of orange in the bag, 6. But there's one less yellow in the bag. So previously there was n minus 6. And then you take one out of the bag. So now there's going to be n minus 7. Now I've just done this. Um, you know, for fun. I really don't need to do all of this. It's just orange, orange that I'm interested in. The way that you work out orange, orange from the tree diagram is you multiply 
So you do 6 over n multiplied by 5 over n minus 1. Okay. But they tell us that this is equal to a third. So you set it equal to a third. How do you times fractions? You times the numerators and you times the denominators. Let's do some. Ex um, so I'm going to use the um, method, but like a mixed factor. If you have two fractions equal to each other, like a over b equals c of d, then it's true to say that a times d equals b times c. That's the method I'm going to use now. Diagonal multiplication. So th 30 times 3 is 90. 1 times n minus 1. So 1 times n bracket n minus 1 is n brackets n minus 1. Then I'm going to expand the bracket. n squared minus n. And then shift it all onto one side. n squared minus n minus 90 equals 0. Yep. I solve this to find the value of n. The value of n is in singular. The value of n. Okay then, so it's, we use the AM method, so two numbers add together to give negative 1, and multiply together to give negative 90. Okay. So let's factorise it, n and n brackets, and the numbers are going to be 10 and 9, and to get negative 1 when I add them, negative 10 and positive Set each bracket equal to zero. So n is equal to 10, or n is equal to negative 9. Now, let's think about the context of this question. Hannah has n sweets in the bag, can't have negative 9 sweets in the bag. So the only answer to this question is 10. Next question. On the grid above, sketch the graph of 3 sin x. So 3 sin x means you're multiplying sin x by 3, and you look at the value of sin x. So take a look at this point. If sin x, at this point, the y value is equal to 0. Multiply 0 by 3. So 3 times 0 is 0. At this point here, the y value is negative 1 times negative 1 by 3 is negative 3. Just there. So the value of sign here is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. It's not anchored here. Sign 90 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Here, sign 180 is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. Okay, so it looks like this. Let's draw the curve now. So it's anchored at the point on the x-axis. Then you need to draw a nice, smooth curve. Something like that's okay. Um, it's supposed to have its peak here, actually. That's all right. Okay, something like that. Next, sketch the graph of tan x. So what we'll do first of all is mark our asymptotes. The asymptotes are at 90 and at 270. This is where the graph doesn't exist. So I'd like to just show that with a dashed line. So. So asymptotes at 90 and at 270, and then 
what we'll do is we'll try to draw the curve now so this approaches the asymptote. So tan of zero is zero. So we're very close to the asymptote here, but not touching. And then after 90, it starts at negative infinity. Okay. Tan of 180 is zero, so it's got to pass through there. And then approach the asymptote. Tan after 270 starts at negative infinity. And tan 360 is zero. So like this. Okay, and you don't need to mark the y axis. There you go. Right, the last couple of questions are grade nine. This is called completing the square advanced version. Okay? So the first thing that you do is you factorize a 2 from the first two terms. And the reason that you do that is because you need an x squared as the first term in the bracket. So you always take out the coefficient of x squared because you need an x squared as the first term in the bracket. Okay? So this works nicely. 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times negative 4x is negative 8x. Plus 9 is on the outside of the square bracket, and you just keep it there. Now, inside the square bracket, you're now going to complete the square. When you complete the square, you write something like this x minus half the coefficient of x, half of negative 4 is negative 2 squared. And then you subtract the number in the bracket squared, so 2 squared is 4. Now we're going to multiply out the square bracket like this. So 2 times the bracket is like this, 2 brackets x minus 2 squared, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and you have a plus 9 at the end. So finally, we end up with 2 brackets x minus 2 squared, minus 2 plus 1, 9 take away 8 is 1. So this is the answer to the question. If they asked you um, for the turning point, just for fun, the turning point would be the number in the bracket with the opposite sign. To make the two coefficient in the bracket makes no difference. So the number in the bracket with the opposite sign and the number on the outside here with the same sign. Okay, and the turning point, don't forget, this is the vertex of the curve. So 2, 1 is about here somewhere, and it's the like, it's the bottom of the bowl, if you will, like this. Okay, that's what 2, 1 is, the turning point where it turns negative positive. Okay, next question. So the 15th term of an arithmetic series. So what we need to do here, is as soon as we see the 15th term, we write down a plus 14d equals 338. And then for the next one, a plus 24d is equal to 208. then we need to work out A and D. So simultaneous equations. If we subtract here, okay, um, I'm going to read it in this direction so that I don't so I'll try to avoid some negatives here. A take away A, bye bye. 24D minus 14D is 10D. And 208 minus 338 is negative 130. That means D is equal to negative 130 over 10, which is negative 30. And we can substitute to work out A. So we've got A plus 14 times negative 30 is equal to 338. 14 times negative 30 is negative 182. A minus 182 equals 338. And that means A is equal to 338 plus 182, 520. Now on the um, class whiz calculator, or even the silver calculator, you can use the simultaneous equations mode to double check if you are correct. So menu equation, option A. You direct to A by pressing this button here, A, which brought down to equation slash function. Okay, so we have simultaneous equations, number one, two unknowns. So we just enter our coefficient. So 1A, 14D, and 338. Okay. On the next 
X and Y, but of course we know X and Y are A and B. If I put 20 in, it would be 13, we already know that. And then just find the sum of the first 25 terms of this series. The sum of the first 25 terms. So from the formula sheet, you copy down the formula, which is N over 2, N over 2, square brackets, 2A plus N minus 1, D. This is from the formula sheet, and this works out the sum of N terms. So we have N is 25, 25 terms. Okay, so 25 over 2, square brackets, 2 times A, so 2 times 520 plus N minus 1, so N is 25, so N minus 1 is 24, times by D, which is negative 13. Okay, we just need to type this in, calculate it now. So we have 25 over 2, open brackets, 2 times 520 plus 24 times negative 13. Gives us a final answer then of 9,100. Okay, so suggested grade boundaries for this paper. It's about 80% Five percent.